Hey, a girl. Hey. <laughs> That's <laughs> wow. Yeah, that hey, happened. Hey, girl. Hey. Yeah. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey, girl. Hey. That that apparently. Hey, girl. Hey. How's how's the hey, girl. Hey. Hey, girl. Hey. Oh, oh, you you sent me a photo. What the fuck? <laughs> What the, what the, what the, what the, what the, <laughs> that's great that is great the 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 way that cyclops is resting on his tit fantastic mm. uh, be better if, if he's my actually... eyes what'd you say i mean if my eyes have to burn so do yours <laughs> <laughs> oh God! So, man, we were just talking a, a little bit about uh -huh. um, a drag race. Are you sad to see Megami go? No. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, right? I, you know me. I love my alt drag uh -huh. uh, people mm -hmm. I, since I'm an alt drag person too. Um, mm -hmm. I was. I know that Maya. I, it's not just because Maya is from down here, like. Her, Miami's misinterpretation of that song was so completely the polar opposite yep, of yep, what it should yep. be. That I dear just, listener, she she, first, she did drag to uh, My Cyrus's Flowers, which is yeah a very redeeming song, redeeming, joyous, like uh, you know all of this stuff. So like when Maya kicked off, she started doing like the Sunday shout, and I was like, oh, she's staying there. Yeah, but also I was just like. I thought at some point Megami was going to yeah. flip, right? Yep. Go into another mode. But like literally she did that sad like funeral flower thing, like mm -hmm. the whole song. Yep. Uh, and I know she's like, I should have worn this. I'm like, you completely missed the point of the entire yep. song. And yep. what are you talking Which it's, about? It's fine so. for the first verse. Like you can be sad and everything for first verse. Oh, but as sure. soon as that chorus hits, you give it. But then again, how could you be how could you be happy in that wedding dress she was in? Dear listeners, it was the it was the flower ball. And she took she she did a Madonna reference. I don't that's the best I got. It's it's like I a short wet it's reference. a short wedding dress that was flowers, and her story was that she, you know, got a stain on her wedding dress and had to like I don't know. I would have literally, instead of doing any of what you did, I would have just made crotch flowers, boob flowers, and a veil. And that's it. Yes. It would have been, um, yes. and, and like, because, you know, she's all about her body positivity, too. Like, that would have been amazing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, instead mm -hmm. of like, I mean, think, let me think of this entire blah, 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 yep. blah, blah. Nope. A you veil, a veil of thing. flowers, boob flowers, crotch flowers. Yep. And one that's big it. flower on the ass. That's so it. when she turned around, it would it. be like a huge sunflower. Rue yeah. would have loved it. That would have been it, right? I mean, literally, like Morphine, that her outfit wasn't that much, mm -hmm. but it was so, it was exactly, she came to that character, they knew the flower child, they knew the whole thing, and they're like, Oh yeah, no, that, okay. that was that was a cheap or so that was, that was a party city outfit right there. She just threw some Brian Strong Strong. She just stoned it. Mm -hmm. But still, she stoned it, right? Because Lord <laughs> Girl, there there was I was watching um the pit stop uh and they were talking about the looks and one thing I didn't notice on the runway that I that they pointed out was Q's uh white panty. It looked like oh. a diaper. Like you go back and look oh, at no. it and it's like oh, I'll go, I'll go back and oh, watch. Oh, that's a bad cut of a panty. You know, if I were the producers, obviously I would totally have the pit stop have additional content like mm -hmm. could you imagine if they had some extra parts of content or extra mm -hmm. views or extra things that would be really cool i think mm -hmm. like and would make it almost like appointment tv afterwards yeah, it's but, like, oh but, but the thing is the thing is you, you've already got an hour and a half when people watch or two hours if you watch uh untucked then right. you've got another 45 minutes of the pit stop you don't want your brand to go completely down right that's and then true. you've got another 20 minutes of uh, the fa photo fashion review where they actually that's do have like fat. Oh, picture. that's true. Yeah. The fashion, so, I forgot that takes that place of that. The, the yeah. boot, doot, and what's it? Boot, boot and toot. Boot and toot. Yeah. Boot and toot. Boot and toot. 
<laughs> I say so last night somebody tipped somebody they threw a quarter on stage and um our stage kitten got it and she was like I'm quarter and uh and I just started singing the chorus of here's a quarter called some who's kids <laughs> and all of these emo kids just turned collectively and looked at me like what is what's happening right <laughs> Anytime somebody did that to me, I I would always go out and say, next time make it make sure it's the full roll. Mm-hmm. I don't do single coins. I do full. So maybe rolls. napkins rain from the balcony, and I'm like, it that better be dollars the next time. Don't play. Because mm-hmm. if it ain't dollars, it's just a mess. That's right. If it ain't dollars, it's, it's just, just a mess. A mess. I have so one of our legendary queens here, um, Erica Norell. I did that Valentine's show with her, and she this week, which I'm saying is all this for a reason, is happy anniversary to Erica Norell of of South Florida for celebrating her 30th year in drag this week, oh which my God. is wild, right? And um, and she's like this like trans icon here and everything. She <laughs> we're back. <laughs> And she said, you know, I know people think that I'm this like gorgeous trans woman and all of this. She's like, you know, honestly, I'm just a big old messy leather daddy that just happens to be in a beautiful trans woman's body. And I was like, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Girl. I said, I will. I said, on my deathbed, I'm going to quote that. (laughs) Girl, speaking of leather days, did you know that we have Patreon? (laughs) Dude. Listeners, if you go to patreon.com, boom, it's a babe, you can throw us some money. Hey, Mame, yes. Mame, Mame, did you know that we have another podcast? I, I did not. That's right. We have Baking Sugar, our Design Win podcast, and and Over the Moon, which are we going to record this week? Hopefully. Sure. Our, our Moonlighting podcast, which, I don't see why which not. you will get it in the, you'll get to see us in the last of drag. Doing that, and and dear listeners, you get all of our podcasts commercial free. Again, takes a while. That's it. Hey, Mame. Yeah, Mame. Do you know we have merchandise? What? Ow, that's my funny bone. <laughs> that's right. If you go to bimsonbabe dot com, you can buy something. Hey, Mame. Yes. Hey. Yes, hey. dear. Yeah. I'm in so much pain right now. Do you, did you, do you, do you, do you, do you know what I love? Mims is broken. Five star reviews. That's right, dear listeners. I love five star reviews. They really help boost us up to where we belong. Boost us? Boost us up. Mame, Mame. Yeah. This is yeah. season four, episode nine. Trouble in Eden. So we're in New York City. Oh, New York City. And we're having a little bite to eat at a restaurant called Much Ado About Noshing. <laughs> we would totally go there. I'm convinced. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Speaking of what we were talking about earlier, are you into leather? Does it do anything um, for you? It does no, nothing for me. I like the smell me. of it. I like, I like the smell of it. Mm, 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 the smell of it. Like I do um, go to sometimes I go to Leatherworks. Just like I honestly though, like I I have a more I have a bigger appreciation for it now that I do the the drag costumes mm-hmm. because when you really look at it, it's a lot of work. Oh like, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, lot of yeah, 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 yeah. That that yeah. that part, yes. But I meant like, does it? No. Raise your heckles. No, I mean. I'm not usually the demographic for a leather guy, so I don't really have that much interaction with them. 
Even <laughs> even when I used to even when I used to regularly go to a leather bar. The only the person male. ignored more than a fat person a bear bar is a brown person. Yeah. It was almost like I had this orb yeah. around me that just <laughs> like re reflected everybody. Oh so, yeah. Oh, oh, what, what, I don't see you. Who are you, who are you talking to? This, this is, this is Mame. Uh, who? I don't see them. But they're, they're brown. Wow. Oh. You sound so much right now. Uh -huh. Like when I used to go out with my ex, that's literally what it used to be like. Really? Like, I'm not even joking right now. That's literally what it used to be like. As if I did not actually exist. Oh, God. Like him having to say, like, this, this, over and over and over and over again. Yeah. It's like, gosh, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, that's literally what it used were to be Were you like. the only brown person around? No, no, there were a few. Okay. Because there were, like, now I will say, in... In the modern defense, right? Because I have been here for twelve years. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of brown people have kind of taken it over, okay. um, so it's it's become much more like you know much more inclusive in that way. Um, but yeah, I, but even then, it's kind of like they're in their own sphere. Mm -hmm. I don't see all that much of the. It's almost like high school again with like the Girl. two different. Yeah. Is there is there a club down there like Club Odyssey in Winston used to be like where it's a hip hop club on one side and a dance club on the other? Yes, we have that. I remember that. Oh God, it was nothing but gay white boys on one side and black lesbians on the other, and it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And there was yeah. always a fight on both sides. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh God. Mm hmm. All right, man. I gosh. You just came a lot of things just came flooding back. To yeah, now. didn't Those they Odyssey, though? Didn't Odyssey they? Days. Uh huh. It was Odyssey days, girl. Uh, girl. Mm. Well, JB used to go over to the. Oh, go on. I was gonna tell you. I used to go over to the black side, mm -hmm. and every time I'd open my mouth, they'd look at me like, "Why are you over here?" Because <laughs> you're a lesbian. <laughs> like I, I'll go back. So JB's eating with Mary Rose. Okay. And her, we found out her sister Charlotte was just murdered, maybe. Oh, no. She got a letter saying, don't trust anybody in Eden. Okay. Eden, Oregon. Okay. Wow. Charlotte died and was cremated the next day. And Mary Rose's attorney, Lewis, is like, y y y I, I, I need to, you need to go to Eden to sort this shit out. You, you have to go. Mary Rose has to go to Eden. She asked JB to go with her. And JB's like, that's, that's, a, that's a trek. That's a trek. Just like this plot start. It's a trek. <laughs> wait, wait. The trek's about to get a little bit more because we're on the street. And a man presses on the gas and hits Mary Rose. <gasps> oh. She's not dead. Oh. But we're at the hospital. The driver is. Oh no! Oh, Wait, yes. what? Yeah, I know. It's it's very it's very convoluted. This is a this is a this is a lot of plot to get through in five. But girl, this is literally the first four or five months of the episode. We've already had Oregon hit with a car. We're in a hospital now. <laughs> so many things. Well, uh, Lewis is going to Oregon tomorrow, and JB's like, you know what? How about if I go and pretend to be you, Mary Rose? And Jessica. she's like, well, I don't know if that's safe. She's like, I can handle myself. I've I've taken down bigger men than this, turned them into meat, served them on platters. Mm, platter meat. Mm. I don't even know what it means. It just sounded funny coming out of my mouth. <laughs> platter meat, girl. Platter, platter meat. <laughs> girl, I think you just, I think you just came up with your new restaurant and going Wilton. Y'all come on down to platter meat. 
We got every kind of meat of every kind of size. We got different casings, different you know, seasons. That is something, that is something interesting that I noticed. Why is there no, like, for lack of a better term, chicken on a stick on a bun outside there? Chicken on a stick on a bun outside? What are you talking about? Did you never go after Legends to go get chicken on a stick on a bun? I always went to Snoopy's after Legends. Oh, okay. Well, then, the, why are there no, there's no hot dog vendors there? There are. Okay. They're over, they're down by um they're down by uh, Ramrod. Oh okay. Yeah, I don't go there. Like they don't because there's not really like a good. I'm. I think the reason why it's especially on the upper part of the drive is because the there's still open restaurants there. Mm -hmm. So oh, oh, the other end thing, that's where they're at. I the gotcha. Food truck and also a hot dog stand. I gotcha. I gotcha. I gotcha. I gotcha. And they're and they're good hot dogs. Like I remember those hot. I still remember. I don't know if it's because I was a little intoxicated. Because I never got super drunk at Ramrod, but like they had like a really good um, relish they put on it. It was very tasty. Mm. <laughs> next time when you're here, we're gonna have to go to Hot Dog Heaven though. Okay. Like Next time, because I when you pointed it out when we were driving by. Um, I forgot it was season, right? Because they closed during the summer. Oh. Um, and so, yeah, because, uh, like, you know, it's for dear listeners, in case you, most of you probably don't know this because it doesn't make a lot of sense, but uh, South Florida off season is actually the summer because it is so hot here. Uh, and a lot of the businesses kind of close for the summer and then reopen like in uh, August. So, yeah, which yeah. is crazy. It's not that much warmer than what is here. Oh, I know, but it's just a, you know, it's just a thing. It's just a thing they do here. I mean, they, it happens every year, every year they're, you know, like some of the bars go to like open only like half of the week, things really? like that. Yeah, it's a, like, I mean, it's, it's hard to, it doesn't make sense, but when you're here in the middle of it, you can, you, you notice it. Like you can okay. actually tell, like for us, it's not that bad. Like at the, at, at my bar, it's not that bad because we get so many um, European tourists, but like Fort Lauderdale doesn't get as many. They get more American tourists. So that's why we don't notice it as much like in my bar, because it's a lot more like foreign people. Mm. My, my Internet's unstable. The girl. more you know. The more you know. And now you're back. Oh, to Lord. The, yeah, girl, the Internet was unstable. Give us now it's, Give us it's, it's back to being normal. Girl. It's back. To being, well, so we're in Eden. And JB's mm -hmm. riding around in a in a Ford Mustang, I believe that was. Yeah. Or Taurus. It, it may, I think it was a Mustang. I think that was. It's old. the Mustang. It's those old, ugly ones from that time period. Yeah. And JB asks a woman about the Garden of Eden Hotel, and the woman okay. just does a pursed lip and walks away. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Uh oh. White women be white women, and. Come on, white women. Well, well, she finds her way to the hotel. They go in. It's a pretty old house, right? It's a mm -hmm. very pretty old house. We go inside and we meet a woman in a fright wig named Leela Benson. You hey, tell <laughs> Lila, not Leela, Lila. And Lila has a very strong Southern accent for being. I know. She felt like, she felt like Ken. Ken who? No, Ken. K I N. Oh, Ken. <laughs> Not Ken, the male name. Ken, the related to. <laughs> Dear listeners, if you did not know, I had to be, I had to train myself to differentiate between 10 and 10 and pen and pen because it's all I N in the South. It's pen and pen, 10 and 10. Yep. Ken and Ken. Ken and Ken, honey. Mm -hmm. Ken and Ken. Go pick up your can can. can. <laughs> yes, I can, 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 can. Woo woo. Woo woo. That sounds like a menagerie walk. Everybody, Ken, Ken. Mm. What's that? That's like kissing cousins. <sighs> well, hmm. Those were the days. Um, Those were the days. So, so where am I at here? Ah, Charlotte 
told Lila that she would be in charge one day. Oh. Mm-hmm. Nice. So JB goes up to the to her room, and Lila said that she's going to get Lewis a room there. Are you sure? He's like, yeah, give me a room. Where else am I going to stay? Okay, we'll get your room. So as soon as they go upstairs, Lila's like, calls Dr. Lynch, who's that guy. Yeah, he is a that guy. He is a that Definitely. guy. And she just, he calls someone and just says, she's here. <laughs> well, in the room, JB looks around and's like, the decor here reminds me of something, but I can't quite put my finger on it. <laughs> we meet Martha Nielsen, the housekeeper. Okay. And she's very like, what, you're staying the night too, Lewis? Here? Are you sure? Okay. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> it's very odd. Like you're, like you're sleeping here tonight. Like you're yeah, sleeping. You're, you're, sleep, you're, you're actually sleeping in a room here. Okay. okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Strange, but okay. Well, we we're, we go back downstairs. We found out that Sheriff Landry called JB. Mm-hmm. So, so, so we're at the sheriff's office. Mm, yeah, yeah, I'm very sorry. Your, your sister passed away there, Mary Rose. Thank you, I'm Sheriff. Very, you sound you sound very, quite broken very, up about very, it. I'm very upset. I'm very, very, very upset. I'm crying on the inside, Mary Rose. Wow, so I can tell it's affecting I'm your very, 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 very tired, Mary Rose. I'm tired. I can see that. You should probably. Take, well, you should. See. He he walks away. We find out his name is C.J. Dobbs. C.J. Dobbs, Henny. C.J. Dobbs. Beware he's, of anybody who goes by like initials. He's got a fort in Statesville, North Carolina, <laughs> which uh, which they rebuilt. That I, you know, part. I need to drive by that shit. I have not driven by since it's been rebuilt, just to see what the hell it looks like. I've literally had multiple people tell me that. They're like, you got to go by and see it. I'm like, okay, okay I will. I mean, girl, it, it's it's got such that that hole in the ground has so yeah. much meaning for us. Yeah. Dear listeners, for the longest time. So what it was, was it was a basically a portable fort. They built it, mm -hmm. then moved it farther west. It was there for like a year. But they dug a huge like ditch in the ground. Yes. And the only thing that was there was the ditch. And a little tiny museum that had a couple of arrowheads in it. I don't mean to laugh, but like... Oh, go as ahead. An adult, as an adult now, when you say it like that, mm -hmm. you realize like, oh my gosh, that's literally what it used mm -hmm. to be. And it was like our, it was our pride and joy of our town. So the place where they're, have you heard about Mebbin getting the, uh, the Bucky's? No. So Mebbin's getting a Bucky's girl. That's very fortunate for them. So let me tell you who, who all's not happy about it. The residents of Mebbin, the, the like people like small businesses around Mebbin. And some of the tribal people from Mebbin, because it's on old Indian trading ground. So, like, it's, it's, ju it's, ju it's just a Bucky's. I don't understand. Girl, it's, do you know how big a Bucky's is? Yeah, but, like, how does that affect the small businesses in the area? Because they're, like, they're not going to go anywhere. It's They think it's going to be like a Walmart, that they're just going to go to Bucky's for everything. Do they have the same inventory as Walmart's? And they, they, do you know how big, they're like the size of a Walmart. But I thought, I mean, I just thought it was like a convenience store on steroids. I didn't think it was like something think, to rival I like small I think they've got groceries businesses. and shit too. Lord Jesus. Okay. Uh-huh. If you, right. if you come up here, now if you plan your trip up here, we can go, yes. we can go to a Bucky's and get some Bucky Bites, which are, which is like, uh, it's caramel corn, but we'll figure it out. Girl, I just gotta bring some Benadryl. That's hey, all. Girl, okay. you get it there. Yeah, that's all. Uh, like y'all do IVs. I'll do an IV while I'm eating this. 
So at the sheriff's, we find out that Dr. Lynch was the one who was with her when she died, and mm-hmm. it was under his authority to cremate her. Oh. So now we're at CJ's. Mm. And three men, who we don't know who they are, a bald man with a mustache who looks a little bit like my father, a... <laughs> yes, he did, actually. A, a man with a big poof of black hair... And CJ are the other two men are talking about how nervous they are that she's here. Well, y'all okay. just need to calm down and I'll handle her. And then the other one's like, so this one, she's going to have a heart attack too. <laughs> Face crack. Face crack. He and he. Mm-hmm. Well, we're back at the hotel and Lewis is waiting outside for JB, and he's like, oh, you, you know, let's let's go inside so you can... I wasn't able to find anything else, but there is something you need to see. Mm-hmm. So they go inside, and oh, girl, surprise, they're hookers in the 1800s sort of sense. Yes. <laughs> it was so good. It is, it is so what people that the age watching this would think hookers would be like right and this is in this is we're this is modern time at this moment yes even like a little piano playing and everything like what lila comes up in like a red sequence dress yes a sequence um sequin dress and like a blue or purple uh boa and -hmm. she goes up jb she's like you said it was business as usual, right? And JB's like, you know. And Lewis is like, um, why do y'all start? Or no, JB's like, why do y'all start so early? It's like, well, so our regulars can get home to their families and kids. I mean, I'll is have there the, a lie, though. I mean, is there a lie? I'll have the businessman no. special. Well, we're back in the room, and we find out that uh, Charlotte didn't leave a will. Oh, no. Martha busts in and is like, don't trust anyone in Eden, especially not the sheriff, because she was giving, Charlotte was bribing him $1,000 a month to stay away. Charlotte had lots of enemies and a metal box with, like all of her papers and all okay. of her money and the will are missing girl. Girl, this is just too much here. There's too many, there's too many strings to this puzzle, honey. I don't like it. They got too we, much mystery. Here. We find out that Martha and Eddie signed the will. Okay. Eddie, Eddie is who Lila is kind of, you know, with. Mm-hmm. I really like that shirt, by the way. It's not a shirt; it's a dress. <laughs> I really like that dress, by the way. Well, like it's like a little girl. Little... If, if if you have more, if you have more uh, stuff like you should turn that into t shirt too, because it's it's super I cute. I don't have enough for this one, but I actually have started doing that, um, taking like the extra pieces and doing that. So, but, well, at least tank tops. Yeah, what 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 kind of material is that? Cotton or is it polyester? It's the stretch material, honey. It's stretchy. Oh yeah, that. Okay. Oh yeah, that that. Yes, for that form-fitting mumu you're wearing. <laughs> <laughs> and they gave like a little like nineteen thirties drape along the sleeves and everything. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Gone. I will the... be. I will be wearing one of my new outfits when we record next. Because I found so so the 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 the, the like triangle top, I yeah. found out if I, I actually like rolling it up so it just oh. it's a midriff. It looks oh. so cute. Oh, good. No, I'm got like yeah. I was like I said in my head I could see it, but I was I didn't know how you were going to wear it because I was yeah. like, I wonder this could be done in a lot of different ways. Yeah, I, I I left the triangle down. I was like, there's something. No, 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 no. This this does not feel Mims. And I rolled up. I was like, that's the one. Come on, midriff. 
Yes. Uh, the house down the boots. House down boots midriff. Yeah. <laughs> God, God, oh, buddy. Mm. Are you are you okay over there? I'm fine. Oh, oh God. Well, girl, right, back to the back to back the sex to- workers. <laughs> Back to the sex worker oh, mystery. God, is it Venmo or is it Cash <laughs> App or Zelle? <laughs> oh, girl, there's a new, uh, there's a person that came to, uh, to our karaoke. Yeah, that is her name is Zell. And it's amazing. Like, every single time I say it, Carlos always goes into a rant now about it. Like, he's like, He's like, you heard her. He's like, come on, time to send it over. Send this. Come on, you heard it. Anytime she sings, y'all got to sell us some money. I was oh. like, I don't want mine now, actually. <laughs> do, 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 you, do you have your Zelle on the, on the, on yeah. your thing? Oh, God. For a different a, account, right? Actually, no, it's not my Zelle. I have a QR code for my Cash App and okay. for my uh, Venmo. Okay. So, that, those in case those. they don't have cash. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which I like those actually. It's nice because you know they always send a little message along with it. So there's they're mm-hmm. sometimes they're really sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So JB turns to Martha and it's like, hey, mm-hmm. clean the men out, lock the doors. We're gonna have a key key. <laughs> <laughs> those three things could be taken in so many different uh, ways. <laughs> yep. So JB goes downstairs and she's still pretending to be Mary Rose right now. Like throughout this entire mm-hmm. thing, I have Mary Rose in here, but I'm gonna call her JB because it, it it's it's it easier. Just makes it, easier it, for it makes everybody. it easier. She's going to shut down for three days. Okay. Just like Easter. And she's gonna make they will sure will be rising after. Girl, they will be rising after. She's gonna make sure that all the girls are paid. Oh that way they can mourn and have money. Mm-hmm. And JB is going to stay and take over the mm, brothel. <laughs> did she ever do Best Little Whorehouse in Texas? I'm sure she probably did some run of it. No, she would have been too old at that point. Like when that's that, true. that was in that's the true. 70s. That's true. that's true. She was already in like dame phase at that point. Dame phase. Yeah. I'm saying like she was in like dame phase yeah. that, you know, uh, I think that was like during Mame when she, when she was Mame was in the seventies. Mm-hmm. 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 Dear listeners, in case you didn't know, that's one of the reasons why I picked my drag name Auntie Mame is because uh, Angela Lansbury was one of the uh, actresses that played her. What about, what about, what's her doodle? Uh, oh God, what's her name? Who played Auntie Mame in the. Uh... No, no, it's because of both of them. Okay. <laughs> It's the whole it's the whole Auntie Mame multiverse is why I am called what I'm called. <laughs> right? I took off I, I took off I took off my uh headphones so I can't hear you be you right now. That's fine. That's fine. The Auntie Mame it's... multiverse. Yeah, I mean it's God. literally like think about it. Like take take Vivian three Russell, of there the we act- go. Take three of the actresses, right? Mm-hmm. So the original, which was Rosalind Russell. Rosalind Russell. The, Rosalind Russell, not Vivian. Rosalind the, Russell. The Broadway musical one, which was uh, which was our girl Angela. And then her best friend that played uh, Vera on the Broadway version, which was B. Arthur. Mm-hmm. It's basically like my trinity of lady, uh, lady actresses from the past that I absolutely adore. God, if Marilyn um, Monroe had just done something, you would have been... Don't don't think I didn't toy around with that as a potential drag name because we all know the influence that that woman had on me. Uh huh. <laughs> you are a blonde I, white woman. I am. I really am inside. <laughs> and I'm smarter than I look. <laughs> Just like Meryl. <laughs> Seems to be. You live your life like a candle in the wind. Never knowing who to cling to. 
rain sets in. Yeah, and don't fart. <laughs> Goodbye, English Rose. <laughs> I don't want to talk about roses now. There's so many people destroyed roses in the middle of their performances last night. I don't even want to talk about it. I was like, guys, please. <laughs> we cannot. So many petals on the stage. We're going to fall after a while. Like, like, oh. please. Because our stage kitten was like, I'm not cleaning that up. I was like, I don't expect you to. I don't expect you to. What you need to do is you need to get one, a comically large broom. Just, <laughs> just to like push it across. Carol Burnett style. Carol yes. Burnett style. Yes. yes. So we're at the sheriff's. The okay. sheriff got a phone call and CJ's there. And we find out that JB is staying. He finds out JB is staying. Oh. They're walking around outside. And like we see the minister and his wife. And they're talking. The, the wife is the woman from uh, the very beginning. Her name's Dora, the explorer. And she is very upset about JB because she's a sinful woman. Mm-hmm. Sinful girl. Woman. A woman of sin. Mm-hmm. I'll leave that be. So we're at the docks. And JB is chit-chatting with him. And we find out that the when Charlotte died, Doc was okay. asleep. She called him over. He went over there, injected her with lidocaine, brought mm-hmm. her brought her to the office for oxygen. Did not want to go to the hospital. Mm-hmm. And he did suggest the cremation, but it's because she requested it. And JB's like, what? at which point? When she was gasping for air or when she was already dead? He's like, well, a couple weeks ago, whenever she you know, came in with heart problems. Oh, and you didn't send her straight to the hospital then? Sure. So he, he's like, I got other patients. She's like, that's fine. <laughs> he calls CJ. It's like, she knows everything. Opulence. Opalus, see, oh, she knows everything. Uh, Opalescence. Opalescence. <laughs> Dear listeners, I'm going to give you a warning. This is a gross warning about a vibrator. Um, never buy the Opalescence vibrator. That's all I got to say. I told you that story, girl. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I'm like, what is this? What's happening right now? And then, yeah, I remember then. You remember that story. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, so we're back at the hotel, <laughs> and we find out that Miss Fletcher called Mary Rose. Okay. So we're in the room. Uh, JB and Mary Rose are chit chatting, and Mary Rose is like, "Hey, the man who who got hit." Had a, had a ticket to Oregon, and his name was Eddie Mackle. Oh. There's a gasp. <gasps> Eddie Mackle. But it didn't come from Mrs. Fletcher or JB or JB or Mary Rose. Who did it come from? Lila, who was on the line. Girl. 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 Jacques Hughes. That's what you get for listening in. Uh-huh. Honey. So JB JB goes to Lila's room and she's like, "Eddie just left. I should I didn't know what he was going to do. He was doing it for me. I had no idea. I could have convinced him not to, but he was an idiot." And then she, she's like, "Well, what about Charlotte? Who killed Charlotte?" Lila's like, "Nobody killed Charlotte. What are you talking about?" And Lila kicks her the fuck out of her room. Get out! Get out! This is still my room. Oh, God. Give her that Emmy. I mean, no. (laughs) So now we're at the sheriff's, girl. (sighs) And we're at the sheriff's. And JB asks him to talk to Lila because of Eddie trying to kill her. Mm. And JB's like, and the doc wanted her cremated. And I don't trust him. And Sheriff's like, look, that doctor saved my daughter from a crook. 
and hey, I, there, there's d- different parts of America say creek and creek, di- creek and creek. We 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 say creek in the South typically, mm-hmm. um, and like a very large portion of the East Coast says creek. Middle America says creek. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's very. Di- Do you say creek or creek? Creek. I mean, you know, it's funny that you say that because I realized something later in life because of like my lack of accent or anything like that. Uh-huh. Um, but because of where we grew up, certain words I say the way we say them because yeah. I didn't, I knew of no other words. So like there are certain words that I say and I realize like, oh yeah, like, mm-hmm. you know, if you're, li- if you're listening to me close enough, you can tell I'm not from the North or from the, the Midwest or anything like that. Here's a question for you that I wonder mm-hmm. if it's if it's a mild racism where the word crick came up from mm-hmm. or or not racism but something to separate it from creek indians and it could be it could be like like it that that, that could be a, not a, that wouldn't be a racism that was that'd be separating you know the word out mm-hmm. so it's not referential to the native americans but to the huh yeah no we'll get into that next week oh yeah i saw the title of that and i'm like oh no I can't wait. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Mm-hmm. And then we're all gonna be sitting Native American style on the floor. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. We were little kids. We didn't know. No. I I saw a kid I saw a kid sitting that way and I'm like, I wonder if they I hope they don't call it that anymore. I hope they just call it sitting cross legged. Isn't that what they call crisscross applesauce now? Or is that something different? I've heard that expression. I thought that was where you did this. Like 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 when you were circle, circle, dot, dot, now I've got my cootie shot. I thought crisscross <laughs> applesauce was a different one. I circle, circle, dot, dot. Now I got my cootie shot. Girl, I should have gotten more circle, circle, dot, dots. <laughs> Girl, cootie shots don't work for allergies. That's true. I'm trying to blame something. I'm trying to blame something. (laughs) You know, supposedly, supposedly, um, some people have gotten infected with, like, some random hookworm from Africa, and it works. How do you get infected by random hookworm from Africa? They, 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 there's a place that sells it. You ingest it, and, or no, you rub it on your feet. You give it a you give it a month and you monitor like they go in and they monitor see how it's they make sure that it doesn't go over a certain amount so it doesn't cause malnutrition and like yeah and apparently the the eating of the intestines causes a and this this is true this is there's some light again light research light research the eating of the intestines causes anti-inflammation to the things that cause allergies. There've been like some people who've been so desperate for allergy relief that they've done this and it worked. Wow. Mm-hmm. I'll just keep taking pills. I mean, that's <laughs> fine too, girl. That's fine too. I mean, hell, you could probably just go to the Everglades and put your feet in the water, and get the same thing. Speaking of that, there's another thing, another an interesting other uh, research thing that I'm, I can tell you about real quick because we got an extra minute. So you know the whole stereotype that Southerners are lazy, right? Yes, yes. It has, part of that has to do with, we all had worms back in the day. We all had hookworm, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, And there were were a couple of people down here doing research about it, and they found Mm -hmm. that we weren't digging our latrines deep enough, and that the hookworms were actually getting out of the latrines. So whenever people walked around to shit outside, they were getting hookworm. So oh, the, wow. So they just dug them like a foot or two deeper, and the hookworms couldn't make it out, and it kind of helped. How about that? Yeah. 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 Oh, sorry. <laughs> Ooh, that just got on me just now, just <laughs> thinking about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That's wild, though. Wow. Girl, one more story for you that has absolutely nothing to do with worms. After the day I got back, or, or like the next night, 
Um, I found love in a hopeless place. Was playing at the grocery store. Okay. And I was just jamming and singing at it grocery. at the grocery store at the at the Harrison Teeter. And I was oh, saying, I found love in a hopeless place. This little old black woman was like, I see you over there. <laughs> I see you dancing, buddy. You just living it. I love it. I'm like, thank you, ma'am. That's your jam. I'm like, yes, it is, ma'am. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> Everywhere you go, they love Girl, you so much. Did I tell you about the woman at the, the airport? So there was there was a woman. She she was she was younger than us. She she had to be in her twenties. Um, she was working at coffee at the coffee shop at the Fort Lauderdale Airport. You know, her makeup was on point and her braids were fierce. Let me just tell you, she looked great, especially for working at. At like 5 p.m. at an airport. Yeah. So I was hungry. I was going to get myself a little sandwich. And I go up and she's, and I was like, can I get a ham and cheese? She's like, we ain't got no sandwiches. Our cooler is broken. Please see below. And there was nothing there. I was like, okay. And I looked over. I was like, is that a ham and cheese croissant though? She's like, why, yes, it is. I was like, I will take one of those and a chocolate croissant. Do you want the ham and cheese croissant heated up? I'm like, no. She's like, do it. Fine. I'll do it. And then, so as I was sitting there, there was a white woman white woman with uh, on her like phone talking very loudly as the other woman the other cashier was like ma'am can I help you ma'am can I help you ma'am can I help you and she just looked at her rolled her eyes and like stormed off and I apparently had pursed my lips so tight and the, the, the my waitress was like oh I, 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 I you saw that too I was like mm-hmm uh huh. I went. Mm hmm. She's like, I like you. She gave me a coffee for free. Oh <laughs> then, girl, I got one more story for you, girl. I, I, dear listeners, thank you for going on this escapade with us. Um, <laughs> it's a journey. <laughs> as I was getting off the plane, we we landed in RDU. There was a, there was a man. There was a man sitting in front of a, a family of older Hispanic women. Okay. And he, he got up, like we'd landed, time to take out, off our buckles, and he got his bag out from above. Like he put it behind him, so he got okay. it out. He accidentally grazed the oldest, like on the shoulder. Um, He said sorry. He said it very quietly. Oh, no. Oh, no. Her head, it had been injured. She had had a concussion. She was saying all of the things. It, like she was putting whatever magic she could on him in Spanish. I don't know. And the entire family was like, you could have said sorry. You could have said, he's like, I did say sorry. And they just lost it. Well, finally they'd start quieting down. Then a white woman from behind me, whose daughter, whose daughter, as we were landing, just was screaming, why, why, That's why, the why? Oh, the daughter, yeah. yeah so, so the mother of her went over to her and was like, I'm so sorry that you had to live through that. And she was like, habla anglais. And the woman was like, no. And she, she just went on in the most basic of Spanish. And like, I'm so sorry. Uh, you know. Yeah, like the normal. Yeah. Yeah, you know? but, but like just feeding into this old lady's crazy. As soon as the door opened, that old lady was up and walking like in front of everybody. The daughter came over and her bag fell on me. And I just looked up at her like, you going to say sorry to me? She just looked down at me. I was like, that's what I thought. And I looked back forward. <laughs> rude, 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 rude. Rude. rude uh. Oh, God. But that woman behind me just getting all up in other people's business when she didn't even need to. Like, I saw it. She saw it. There was nothing that happened. Stay out the Kool-Aid if you don't know the flavor. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Berry Blue. Purple Saurus Rex for me. <laughs> that was always Berry Blue. Um, and the blue, the blue uh, French uh, Otter Pop is the one I liked. Mm. Those actually were very good. Mm -hmm. mm. So we're back at the hotel. Mm, hey, it's me. I'm CJ. And I just thought I'd let you know that I was brought here by my dad when I was 16. And I really like this place. Here's 100,000 Rupal doll hairs for the place. 
I bought some parcel of land and I had to sell them at a loss because Charlotte didn't didn't make any money. But you know, uh, but Doc he he drank and killed a patient in another state. Isn't that interesting, JB? Oh, or sorry, okay. Mary Rose. Oh yeah, that's um that's very interesting. Very very interesting. So JB, CJ leaves. JB sits with Lila and she opens up. It was real late, about three thirty. She heard noises down the hall, and she saw three men carrying Charlotte out. Snook Sitwell, the bald man, who looks like my father. Reverend Manchester, the man with the big poofy black hair. Mm -hmm. And the doc was following him. He said that Charlotte had called him. The thing that she he, he didn't know that they saw was there was blood on the blanket. <gasps> oh, no. It's almost as if it was a... Mud, man. Oh no! So we're at the church. JB confronts the wife and like the minister's wife. She's just pissed and's like, Charlotte was blackmailing all of them. And she's like, oh, great, great. So the sheriff, the sheriff's here, and JB finally, JB finally opens up to him because he knows that she's JB Fletcher because he found out that Mary Rose was in a hospital in New York City after eating at Much Ado About Noshing. Mm -hmm. It's such a, <laughs> it's like the best pun. It's like a the critic level pun is what yeah. it is like, right? Yeah. Or the yeah. nanny, like. Or Bob's Burgers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. They should put that like next, that should be like next to the Bob's Burgers on one of the episodes. Much Ado About Noshing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we find out that um, she tells about the blackmail. He didn't know about that. Then she's like, "You, I, the reason I didn't tell you about any of this is you took bribes from Charlotte. He's like, no, I gave them away for donations. I've never taken a bribe. I immediately gave them away. She asked for a meeting think? with the man who looks like my father, the reverend, and CJ and the doc. Sarath Hotel. Mm -hmm. And we're, it's going back and forth. And she's like, JB's like, I may just close this place down. Why not? Well, we're at the mortuary, which is where Stillwell lives, right? Because he's 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 a mortuarian. Yes. Yes, they live at the morgue. They do. Um, <laughs> I, I knew somebody who owned uh, Revis Funeral Home. Little old lady okay. Revis, and yeah. she, like one day when we we had some family that was there, um, a very extended family, and we were just my grandfather and I were sitting there talking to her, and she's like, "Yeah, I don't even lock the doors at night. Nobody comes in and try to rob a mortuary. People don't like it being anywhere near funeral homes. It's completely safe." I'm like, yeah, that's that's can, that's yeah. probably true. I didn't yeah, like being sense. in there. It never bothered me. That that stuff doesn't bother me. Mm. I don't mm, 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 mm. like. I, I I remember like my grandfather's body and stuff, and mm, my mother hugging it, and I'm like, no, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's no longer him. And I found out that is how my grandmother and I found out we were very similar people. Really? Yes. Yes. yes it is. It is a Aww. the the. the the soul has left the capsule and it is gone to wherever it needs to go. If it exists, if it doesn't exist, who knows that part? The soul has left the capsule. <laughs> if Elon Musk says his way, we'll all have little chips in there to be talking to each other. That's true, actually. Mm, let's not do Maybe that. We can just keep on going. <sighs> that sounds horrible. It does. Well, I'm gonna be tired. I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need my rest. I'm gonna be tired. Anyway, they're all there. Um, MJ is gonna take full charge of Enterprise. What? What? What is your new thing? So, so she she asked what happened. I, MJ is gonna take full charge of Enterprises. Oh. 
Mary Rose, Mary Jo, my God. I'm like, Mary Jo? D- Andy Potts oh, is this? No. So JB says she's going to take, she's going to stay and take full charge of everything. She asked what happened. Well, what happened was the Reverend found her, Charlotte, <clears throat> in bed, stabbed. He called the doc immediately. So the doc was like, I, I need to, in order to do this, CJ knows how to handle things. I'll call him. CJ said it was a heart attack. Make it loud enough to wake up Lila so you have a witness. Then the Reverend, Reverend's like, anyone could have killed them, right? But they took her to the mortuary because no body, no stab wound, right? Yep. Um, the Reverend was like, anybody could kill them. And JB's like, well, do y'all feel safe? You know each other's secrets. And Doc's like, no, none of us know any of our secrets. Mm-hmm. Jimmy's like, well, the lockbox is gone, and um, somebody knows your secrets, and uh, their warrants out search all of your houses. So, bye. Everybody scatters, and JB goes, runs outside, and is like, we gotta call the sheriff immediately. We're at CJ's. Keeps going back to the sheriff. We're at CJ's, and there's a lockbox. It had to be CJ, we find out, because it was because he knew information about the doc. Mm-hmm. There's no envelope in the lockbox on CJ. JB and the sheriff are there. They get the lockbox from him, open it. And we find out that he kind of figured out, weaseled his way in, convinced Charlotte to sell the property to him. And she got pissed and confronted him. <gasps> So now we're we're back in New York. Mary Rose finds out that her sister was killed by a burglar and that she's going to take over the hotel. Do, 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 do. But they also didn't tell her exactly what the hotel was. Do, 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 do. And that she'd be running a brothel. Do, 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 do. Yeah, when she asks, do you think I'd be good at it? I'm like, meow. She should call Charlene's friend. Throw on she a fry wig. Yeah, she'll uh, call Charlene's friend. She'll mm-hmm. come run it. It's they true. Can it, they can make it a new album. <laughs> Girl, it would probably at least move into the 90s. Yeah. I mean, you know. But the you know 1890s. What, though, another, wait, now that I think about it, though. Mm-hmm. It was like that on in, in her episode, too. The no, it was, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. No, it was. It was a little they, old fashioned. It was a little fashioned, but they were still classy. Like it was not. It was not a yippee tie yay. They were yippee tie yay yay and girl. Wasn't, it wasn't that bad, but like it, like it, it was like it does still have like a little bit of that old fashioned vibe. Well, yes, because it's the South, girl. There's a sudden. <laughs> it's a sudden. Is it the South? Yeah, I've no no. I and, thought it was and, like the back lot. <laughs> Well, no, yeah, that's right. It was a little, it was a little bit dated, but that's why they hired sugar bakers to bring it up to the modern age. Right. No, I know that part, but I like, mm-hmm. like the more we were th- talking about it, I remembered that. Like it was very, you know, mm-hmm. it had that that vibe going on. But girl, I have one more question before I before love- you tell our dear listeners where they can find you. Sure. How was that harness attached in the back? <laughs> Hey, babe. The world may never know. <laughs> hey, babe. Well, I'm sure, dear listener, why don't you tell our dear listeners where they can find you? Totally. Hey, dear listeners, it's I, Auntie Mame, your favorite relation. Uh, you can find me all around South Florida, but especially hosting amazing colossal karaoke every Thursday night at Killer Idol in Miami Beach. Also performing improv comedy at the Villain Theater. More about them at villaintheater.com. And you can get links to all of my stuff at I'mYourAuntieMame.com. And over to you, Mims. Hey, y'all. I'm The Divine Miss Mims. You can find me online at TheDivineMissMims.com. Hey, Mame. Mm-hmm. Show me a Patreon. No. That's right. If you go to Patreon.com, Mims and Mame, throw somebody. Hey, Mame. Yes. Did you know we have another podcast? <laughs> really? That's right. We have. Where's my button? You slay, that's not right. Let me focus on this. We have Baking Sugar, our deciding podcast over the moon. Our moonlighting podcast. Hey, Mame. Yes. Did you know that we have merchandise? Merchandise. <laughs> yeah. That's right. If you go to bimsandmame.com, you can buy something. Hey, Mame. 
Uh huh. Do you know what I love? Five star reviews. That's right, Mame. I love five star reviews. They really help us. <laughs> I love your end of the podcast <laughs> distraction. Well, it's because I always <laughs> look for the phone number. Hey, Mame. Speaking of the phone number, hey, Mame. Yes. Did you know that they can reach out to us? What? That's right. They can send us an email at mimsandmame at gmail.com or send us a text message at 704 380 0618. Hey, Mame. Yeah. Do you have anything yeah. else to add? Then why don't you say goodnight, Mame? Good night, Mame. Bye, y'all.